Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now today's first story is one you may have heard in other places, but it has a new update to it as well. So if you want to skip parts of the story, always feel free to do so. Timestamps are down in the description and along the timeline below. And just before we do get into this story, it says there is a brief mention of murder. So you know where the timestamps are. And it's titled, Am I the arsehole for breaking my fiance's family tradition by naming my son what I wanted? Throw away because I have in-laws on Reddit. Myself, 25 female, and my fiance, 27 male. I have a two-month-old son. We are overjoyed at being parents, but most of my in-laws are refusing to even see our baby because of the decision we made concerning his name. My in-laws have a tradition of giving the firstborn son of every generation the same name. Let's say it's Peter. This has been going on for about seven generations already, and they're very serious about it. My fiancé's eldest cousin was the latest person to get named Peter. Every one of his cousins has only had daughters so far, so our baby is the first son of his generation, and consequently should get the name. I have no problem with the name Peter and would have been okay with naming my son that. Unfortunately, this was also the name of my uncle, who died before I was born. I won't get into details, but it was tragic and traumatizing for my family. My father never got over losing his younger brother. My grandmother asked the family not to name any of our future children Peter during her lifetime. My mother-in-law and father-in-law knew about this promise and at first seemed to not only be okay with us avoiding the name Peter, but also supportive of the one we chose. However, my grandmother sadly passed away when I was seven months pregnant. We traveled for a funeral. On our last days there, my in-laws called to offer me their condolences. Their mother-in-law asked me if I was willing to think about the name Peter now. Suddenly, they were insistent that the name we chose was awful and we had to honor their tradition. According to them, it only agreed to make an exception for us for my grandmother's sake and had no obligation to keep it now that she had passed. My family agrees that while it's true we don't have to avoid the name anymore, it still doesn't feel right to use it. My fiancé agrees with me as well but his parents spent the last weeks of my pregnancy trying to convince us to change our minds about the name. When our baby was born, then we named him what we wanted. My in-laws were furious that we had broken a seven-generation old family tradition. Some of them hadn't previously wanted to name their sons Peter, but did it anyway for the family's sake. They said our decision was selfish and that my family should have moved on by now. This has truly nothing to do with whether my family has moved on or not. It just felt like a betrayal to my grandmother and uncle's memories to even consider using the name. My father-in-law offered us a thousand dollars to change our son's name to Peter after he was born. That was two months ago and neither of my fiance's parents have met the baby or seen us since I was pregnant. Most of my in-laws are on their side and this is causing a huge rift between my fiance and his family. He assures me he's fine but I'm starting to feel really guilty about this. Am I? The arsehole. Edit. The tradition started, as far as I know, when OG Peter died and his son, also named Peter, named his firstborn after his father. Peter III ended up having the first son of the following generation and did the same thing. That one died before having children, so his sister gave the name to her son and so on. The name Peter is very common in my country, so none of them ever got bullied over it. And the fact that it was also my uncle's name isn't as unlikely as one might think. Also, middle names aren't used in my country. Most people get the maternal surname before the paternal one instead. Edit 2, it wasn't $1,000. Different country, different currency. It's still a lot of money, but would probably translate to about 200 USD. I never quite get these naming traditions, and it's just the insistence on it as well, trying to pay you to do it and other family members who have done it just for the sake of family. What happens in the future when these people that when were coerced into naming these children Peter, what happens down the road when their children have children? Are they going to force them to do it just for the sake of family as well? I remember a previous story that we covered about the, the same sort of topic, and there was a lot of people that 
that had the same traditions within their family and they was explaining how they felt like they was robbed of their own identities. One person was talking about how it was like a small town and there was many of these people, let's go with the name Peter again, and they were all called Peter and it was really confusing for like official paperwork and stuff. But let's face it, don't feel guilty about this at all. It's absolutely 100% okay to name your child what you want to. And I just start, and I just sit here thinking, why? What does it achieve in the end? I understand some people do it to honor others, but generations of it? Who are we honoring? Why are we naming? Why is this continuing? I'm just casting my mind to like back in history, the first Peter that came like seven generations ago or whatever. And he's, he kind of sat there thinking, the fuck they doing <laughs> but rich signal says not the arsehole after seven generations i think it's time that their family moved on throwaway says i've always been surprised it even lasted that long princess replies that saying and like no offense but that's a pretty vague tradition like how do they keep track of the new gen to determine this I have cousins 15 years older than me and 15 years younger my husband has cousins 25 years younger than him at some point, this has got to get more confusing than it's worth, right? OP responds saying, generation basically means life of cousins to them. I only kind of get it, but I think basically every first time a cousin has a child, he or she is the first of the generation. My maternal family kind of works like that too. I'm 20 years older than one of my youngest cousins, but we're still from the same generation. His uncle, while only four years older than me, is from my mum's. Sorry. I'm really bad at explaining this. Hell yeah, let's go, says not the arsehole. Family name traditions are weird and you can do whatever you want and name your baby whatever you want. Keep pushing the I'm honoring my late grandmother's final wishes hard so they see how unhinged they sound by asking you to flout that. Alien Overlord says not the arsehole. Just because they named their kids a name they didn't like to keep up a tradition doesn't mean you have to. He's your son. You guys name him whatever you want. As an aside, once again, tradition is a euphemism for misogyny. Note, only male children have a special name and all the female children were not fought over. Presumably no one cared what they were called. All the more reason to end this now. Embarrassed age says not the arsehole. And quotes, some hadn't wanted to name their kid Peter, but did it for the family's sake. And then says, have you broken a pact with Satan or something? And one final comment from Lovely One who says, Seriously, do you live on the set of Dynasty? <laughs> Ugh. I'm sure you're looking forward to the day you decide to go no contact. Congrats and good luck with a pregnancy. Not the arsehole. And Opie says, I swear this is the eighth time I've heard about that show this month. <laughs> my mum used to watch that show when I was younger. And I, th I thought I knew the theme tune in my head, but when I went and checked that out on YouTube, it's not the one. So it's another show she used to watch as well. And I can't remember what it is. It's like... I keep Googling, but I can't find it. Help me. <laughs> so around a month later, OP updates the post and says, I posted this on Am I the Arsehole? But it got removed about an hour ago because I mentioned a violent encounter on an edit. I tried editing it out and getting it back up, but it didn't work. I'm posting here in case anyone still wants to read it. Thank you so much to everyone who commented and offered support. A lot has happened since I posted, so I thought I'd give you an update. About a week after my post, my fiance's parents contacted us. They apologized for their behavior and begged to meet my son. They said they were ready to leave the naming debacle behind and truly wanted to be involved in their grandson's life. We were skeptical, but invited them over to meet the baby. The visit went well. They began coming over almost every day during the next three weeks. I noticed neither of them ever called my son by his name, but I didn't point it out. For the first time in months, things seemed good between my fiancé and his parents. One day, my fiancé was helping my father-in-law with something at our place, so my mother-in-law and I went to the park with my baby. Sometime later, I had to go to the bathroom, so I left him in the stroller with her. When I got back, she was sitting on a park bench chatting with a woman who was cooing over my son. I went over there and introduced myself as son's name's mum. And she said, I thought his name was Peter. I didn't say a word and neither did my mother-in-law. She followed me to the car and we went back to my apartment. On the way there, I text my fiance about what happened. The moment we got there, he kicked both of his parents out of our place. 
he read my text and confronted his father. Thankfully, my father-in-law is a terrible liar and confessed immediately. Apparently, both my in-laws only call my son Peter. That includes whenever they're talking about him. Every time they introduce him to someone else and even baby talking to him on the few occasions they were left alone with him. Neither of them are embarrassed about this and they both think they're in the right. We are heartbroken, especially my fiancé. Not only because his parents can't let go of their pride, but also because the name we chose for our son means a lot to both of us. I blame myself for encouraging my fiancé to allow them near our son. I was raised in a different city than all my grandparents and always wished they could have been more involved in my life. Losing my grandmother didn't help. Pretty much every doubt I had only existed because I thought it would be important for my son to grow up with all of his grandparents around. But now, all my guilt is gone. If they can't respect my son enough to call him by his name, they don't deserve to be in his life. I hope they enjoyed the three weeks they had with their grandson because that's all they're getting until they get their heads out of their asses. I thought I'd clarify some things. First of all, I'm not comfortable sharing my son's name here. But I promise you it's not a unique name or anything like that. It's perfectly normal and popular-ish in our country. Secondly, I mentioned this in the comments, but while my family didn't try to dictate me on my son's name, they would never be comfortable with it. My uncle Peter passed almost three decades ago, but it forever changed everyone who knew him. My grandmother's wish might seem a bit irrational, but it was motivated entirely by grief, and it didn't seem right to disrespect that just because she's not around anymore. And to whoever PM'd me that my fiancé's only on my side to keep the peace. He didn't want to use the name either. Months before I got pregnant, he told me he hoped one of his cousins would have a son before we did, because he always hated the tradition and sympathized with my family. He's just as angry at his parents as I am, if not more. Also, most of his cousins and some other relatives have come around and apologized. Holy levels of unhinged Batman. What the fuck was their end game in this? There was no way they was going to be able to hide what they were doing in the long term. It was always going to come out at some point and make them look like absolutely batshit crazy burks. Oh, it's just one of those situations I'd love to be like with those in-laws and just say, what is going through your mind at the moment? What makes you think that is acceptable? Just to try and get like some sort of honest answer from them. What is going on in there? But someone else noticed how unhinged it was and says, are they always like this? And Opie says, according to my fiancé, they've always been a little entitled, but I never really saw them enough to be able to say that. I will say that, though they were polite, they very clearly didn't care about me until we moved in together. My mother-in-law pretended not to remember my name every time she saw me. My father-in-law would lose interest in any conversations that weren't about him. Once it was clear that me and my fiancé were in for long term, they started acting a lot more friendly towards me, but it never seemed sincere. Someone asked the OP, has other family members come around yet? OP says, most of my fiancé's cousins have come around and his brother was always on our side. His grandmother and some of his aunts and uncles are with us too. His grandfather, divorced from his grandmother, two out of the three living Peters, the two oldest, and pretty much everyone else are either still mad at us or haven't reached out to talk about it yet. My entire family is on my side. They promised not to interfere in the naming process, but are relieved we didn't name him Peter. So, and Opie leaves one more comment about the uncle and says my uncle was murdered. My grandmother's request was motivated by trauma. Again, my family would be mostly fine with naming my son Peter. My dad and my aunt might have been uncomfortable. My grandmother asked us all not to do so. But I wouldn't have been disowned if I had. It simply felt disrespectful, especially since my grandmother passed away shortly before my son was born. My uncle's death was traumatic for my family, but the name Peter is hugely common in my country. So three months from the original post and says, my son is now five months old, almost six. There's still no contact with my fiance's parents who haven't seen us since May. We've both blocked them everywhere. His relatives who were all on our side still are. But most of the ones who weren't haven't come around. If anything, they're even more pissed now. I remember someone suggesting that my fiancé's family might stop using the name after we decided not to. Well, you were right. Last week, one of my fiancé's cousins announced she was pregnant with a boy. She included her baby's name in the announcement, and it's not Peter. What followed was a string of aggressive Instagram DMs from both mother-in-law and father-in-law. 
they both created accounts for the sole purpose of contacting me. I didn't see them until two days later. They sent me almost an hour worth of voice messages about how I ruined their family. They wished their son had never met me, that had seen me for who I truly am, and that I'd never gotten pregnant. Many of the messages ended with, I hope you're happy now, as if they thought they were getting the last word. Only to think of something else they wanted to say. There was name calling, an accusation of me cheating, and the persistent refusal to refer to my son as their grandchild. My fiance and I listened to the messages together. He hadn't gotten any. As much as I tried to distance myself, I was in tears by the time it was all done. I still don't regret anything, especially after the stunt they pulled back in May, but I'm not completely free of the guilt yet. Not to mention their complete disregard for their grandson. I was already having an overwhelming week and this just seemed like the final straw. I must have spent close to an hour sobbing in my fiance's arms. Once I was calmer, he unblocked his parents just to scream at them for a while. I only heard his side of the conversation, but it was more than enough. He finished the call by saying he didn't want to hear from them again. We had a long talk afterwards. My fiancé opened up about the emotional blackmail by his family, before and after my pregnancy. My in-laws were close to threatening him with anything they could if we didn't name our son Peter. I told him about my guilt and how awful I feel for putting him through this. We reassured each other cried a bit more, and had a mostly pleasant evening with our baby. We contacted his cousin. The family has given her shit for breaking the tradition again. They're being way less aggressive though, and I think many of my in-laws are finally learning to let go. We're not expecting any apologies anytime soon, but we'll be glad if they come. Our wedding will be in September 2024, and whoever doesn't give us a sincere apology until then is uninvited. My fiancé's parents are banned either way. We came to that decision together. Also, I'd like to address some comments on my previous update about how I was letting my family's trauma win, or how the name wouldn't be hurtful now that my grandmother has passed. I can't stress enough the damage my uncle's death caused. He was only 30 years old. He had a fiancé, a great career, and his whole life ahead of him. I don't know many details about what happened, because I didn't want to upset my family by asking. My grandmother wasn't the only person hurt by this. My entire paternal family was. And if I remember correctly, the person responsible isn't even in jail anymore. It was more than 20 years ago, but the wound never truly closed. So yeah, I think it's safe to say the tradition is over. The next Not Peter will be here in January, right before my son's first birthday. It was never my intention for this to turn into a shitstorm, but, but I'm so incredibly proud of my little family. Thank you so much to everyone who shared their stories and offered advice during these last few months. I'll be forever grateful for all the support I got from you all. So roughly around 10 months from that last post, Opie comes in with a new update and says, Hey everyone, it's been a while. I hope you guys had a great Mother's Day. I remember that last year I promised myself I'd write a final update as soon as I felt calmer or felt the situation was closer to being solved. That actually happened months ago, but I've been busy lately. Following my previous update, my fiancé's side of the family remained upset about the tradition being over for a few more months. They were way less intense about it, especially with a pregnant cousin I mentioned, but it was still evident. That cousin's not Peter, almost a year later, I still can't think of a better term, was born in January. Our son turned one the next month. I think the fact that these two things happened so close together helped many of my in-laws let go of the tradition. We got a few apologies we weren't expecting. Some of them were sincere enough that we slowly started re-establishing contact. My fiancé's parents were not among those who apologized. We haven't spoken to either of them since last July. From what I've heard from some of his other relatives, however, mother-in-law seems regretful. She has told some of them that she wishes she could be a part of her grandson's life and wonders if making his name a hill to die on was a bad decision. Father-in-law, from what I gather, barely acknowledges my baby exists. My fiancé knows about how his mother feels, but he says he doesn't care. And even if we did get an apology, I don't think either of us can forgive his parents. As much as we're mostly okay now, I sometimes feel like their treatment of our family ruined the first few months of our baby's life. I know that's not actually true, but I don't want them around my child. Besides all that, things have been great. My son is 15 months old now, which I don't think I'll ever really get used to. He recently started drawing and has been expanding his vocabulary. He said, and I'm going with Google here, it says it's Portuguese, my mind. <laughs> First, by the way, my fiance and I 
are still getting married in September. We're thinking about moving abroad in a couple of years for work reasons, but we're not sure yet. We also recently got a dog. Sadly, we didn't name him Peter. <laughs> this will be my final update. Whatever guilt I had about the situation a year ago is completely gone. And my life has been peaceful enough that it feels safe to say the shit show is over. Hugo, if you ever find this, you're the most fantastic thing that has ever happened to us. Thank you for letting me be your mum. Thank you, Reddit, for all the love, advice, and support you've given me this past year. One final comment with a reply from OP and says, while this may be your final update on the name in Saga, you said you're getting married in September 2024 and mother and father-in-law are not going to be invited. Prepare for more craziness from them at that time and good luck. OP says, I really do think this is over. My fiance's parents don't know when or where we're getting married, so I'm not worried about them showing up. They haven't reached out to us in months and we have no interest in contacting them. And I gotta be honest, I thought the same way as that comment with the, the wedding coming up. I thought, oh, they're gonna turn up. But I also know that's because I've read thousands of Reddit stories and I've always seen like the worst in people. But I really hope that your wedding goes smoothly and you know your life remains drama free. And now I'm gonna turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? What would you do in OP's position? Do you let those family members back into your life? What about mother-in-law or father-in-law? Do you think anything might happen at that wedding or not? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.